20 years ago, gay stereotypes were much stronger than they are now. And the fact that gay people were doing a 130 mile ride uh, was something that the community at large would have been very surprised because uh, they had image of us as, you know, hairdressers and drag queens. Beforehand, I assumed because it was a gay event, it was going to be more of a party atmosphere. Just, you know, everybody, you know, I don't know, flags and balloons. For, for, for gay and lesbian people especially, uh, going to Provincetown is not just... Um, you know, a place to end a bike ride. It, it's a pilgrimage destination. You think it's going to be easy, but it's not. I'm rider number one, and I started the ride back in 1985, and the first year, uh, I just wanted to do it, and I didn't want to do it by myself, so I put a, a listing in the Children Mountain Club newsletter to see if anybody else was foolish enough to, to do this. I'd already um, uh, ridden by bicycle to Provincetown a couple of times myself before that. Uh, but I'd also gone on uh, quite a number of trips with Bob, and so when, when he said he was going to do the trip, um, I thought it'd be a fun thing to do. I started riding with uh, doing the P-Town ride before it was Outriders. It, you know, it started out as a Chiltern event in 85, and I rode with him and started in 86, and uh, I think Outriders, Bob Bland created that in like maybe 88 or something. We did it the weekend after Boston Pride. Uh, because basically it was the longest day of the year, uh, the longest, the solstice, and so we wanted to have plenty of time to get here before dark. Uh, we had rain the first year, and so I, I ended up skipping the next couple of years. As it continued to grow, we decided to get more sophisticated about it. Uh, the second year, I arrowed the ride while I was riding. He gave us maps. He was going to ride a little bit ahead, and uh, he had picked this color called cerise, which is something kind of reddish, and he had picked it for political significance. It looked pinkish to him on the cap. Well, the trouble is, you know, once you spray it down on a gray pavement, it just disappears. I mean, these arrows were <laughs> invisible. Um, and, uh, you know, it also meant he had to carry like two cans of spray paint, which, you know, is, that's a little bit of weight. And uh, so I, I was just real disappointed with it. And uh, John Tobin, um, who was one of the riders back then, and he, uh, he and I both also rode with the Charles River Wheelman, and so we knew what good arrows were like. We, we first had these lambdas, and uh, we, I think we used green paint, and uh, it was a mess using the, because we used stencils. Oh, it was a mess, and it just, uh, and, it, and then we went to, after a couple of years of that, we went to freehand lambdas, which work better, but, you know, they don't really point well. And people, you know, it's like ambiguous which way a lambda is pointing because they're lowercase lambdas. And um, so we knew this just wasn't working. And then finally, you know, we one year we kind of hashed out and came out with this, uh, the triangle with a line through it. You know, it's triangle, you know, suggests gayness, but it doesn't point anywhere either. So we had to put the line through it to clearly point. And then for, for a couple of years we did, uh, we did it in two colors, um, pink and green. My name is Kim Rosen, and this is my first year doing Outriders. And the reason I got involved is because I've I had friends who've done it for many years and have always been at the finish line to watch them come in. And I've never really been an athlete and always thought this was something, bike riding was something I wanted to do. And a year ago when I turned 40, I decided it was time. But bicycling is very approachable. That's one of the great things about bicycling. It's a lot easier, I think, than running. I don't want to uh, make it sound like it's uh, you know, really easy. It does require a work, and you have to get in shape for it. I know I've had uh, experiences where I wasn't in shape, and I regretted that. Um, but it's something that you can definitely build up to. Um, and bicycling is something that you can start um, at a very low level, which I don't think is true of a lot of other activities. Paul introduced me to the ride, Paul Marceau. And in December, I was at the hospital visiting my father. 
who was who was quite ill at the time. And on the television, there was a, a coverage of a shooting that had just happened up in Wakefield, Massachusetts. And I had the feeling as I was watching this coverage that I knew somebody that was involved in this. It was just a feeling that I had because I know a lot of people that work up in the North Shore. And it turned out that this was the, uh, the Wakefield shooting where seven people were killed. Some guy came into the office one day with a gun and just decided to start shooting. And Paul was actually one of the people that was killed that day. Every time I ride this ride, I think of Paul, not in a sad way, but just kind of to thank him. Bicycling with gay people, gays and lesbians, is very different from going with uh, straight people. Straight people are different. Uh, they have different attitudes about riding. The, the guys are all hyper-competitive. They all want to get up, be the fastest. Uh, uh, the women, uh, either they're competitive or they want to um, show their asses off or something for the guys. I, um, but so it's a, it's a really different flavor to it. The, the gays almost always ride in groups and support each other along the ride. The straights just don't do that, or, or uh, those who do are a minority. The worst thing I've heard is really the weather, that uh, historically it's been really hot and, and people have just felt dehydrated and exhausted and, and just incredibly challenged physically. Well, I think there's no question that the worst ride ever was in um, uh, 2002 when it rained all day. Um, which, um, given my experience in 1985, you'd think I would have stayed away from it. Cold, windy rain, and so few people rode, and I took the ferry. Cold and rainy and windy, and as an organizer of the ride, I thought, nobody's going to show up. We're going to have food for 300 people, we're going to have supplies for 300 people, and nobody's going to show. So I'm tempted to say that that was our worst ride. But in a way, I think it was our best ride, because we did have people show up. I think the best thing I've heard is the feeling people have when they enter, I think it's probably Truro, and they get that view of Provincetown and the ocean and just that kind of uh, resurgence of energy that gets them through. It, it, it's hard to come up with one thing that's the, um, the, the best thing that, that's, that's happened on the ride. I guess if I had to pick something, it would be um, you know, stopping and helping other people with flat tires. Because um, to, to me, that's um, that's a lot of what the what the ride is about. It's it's about uh, community. It's not just about you know showing that you can get from one place to another uh, on your bicycle. There's a lot of evenness on the ride. You know, there aren't any years that would stand out too much. And you know, I guess the best year would have been the year uh, where I was actually the first rider in. You know, it kind of amazed me. There was one year where the weather was absolutely perfect. It was just a day where it was blue sky and white puffy clouds and dry air, cool breezes, warm sun. It was just a perfect day. Well, we've, you know, had every uh, five years or so, a, a, a new group of people have come to the fore to take the, the take over the coordination. I think the next gen generation of uh, people will come to the fore so that it will keep going. I'm planning on riding as many years as I can. I'm still, I'm still happy being an organizer. It's actually a great way to meet people. It's become a benchmark that uh, every year I can assess that I'm still capable of doing it. Steady as she goes. They're not going to tear down the bridges, you know, they're not going to turn Provincetown into uh, Las Vegas. So. Well, this for me was the greatest physical challenge I've ever undertaken. And I would say if people want to really challenge themselves, if they want to do it with a group that is supportive and energized and organized, I would do this ride. I actually have told a lot of people about it, gay and straight. We've talked about doing the ride from Boston to Agunquit, and that would be kind of the northern version of this ride. So there are other places that the ride could be done. But I think there's something about Boston to Provincetown that just makes this ride what it is. It's just a special, it's just a special ride. I, I can just see people continuing to ride to Provincetown for, uh, you know, as long as there's a Provincetown there.